Well, good morning. Hello. My name is Kevin Lett. This is Dr. Naima Lett. We are mm -hmm. co-pastors of Hope in the Hills, and we welcome you to our live broadcast on YouTube. And mm -hmm. we ask that you would like, share, and subscribe if you have not already done so, uh, so that others who may benefit from the messages that we bring would be able to partake, be able to comment, give us feedback, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We are a virtual community mm -hmm. as much as we are a personal face-to-face -face community. So we appreciate your help with that. Yes. Um, but happy Cinco de Mayo, yes. everybody. It's 5-5 five, five uh, today, 5-5-2-4. Five, five, in, in the month of May. <laughs> Yeah. So, also happy early birthday to my mother. Happy, happy. Um, she is, well, I won't say what her age is going to be, but she is <laughs> happy spry birthday. for her age. And so, happy birthday to you. Mother's Day Love is coming you. up next weekend as well. So, also, happy, happy, happy to all Day. the mommies out there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and mother, mommy figures. Happy, happy. That's right. So, we're going to get into a message today, but before we do that, we're going to have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for enabling us to come together on this first Sunday of May. Thank you for, um, for all of your many blessings. Thank you for all the graduates who are uh, walking across stages uh, this week and next week. Um, thank you for their accomplishments. Thank you for seeing them through to the finish line. And we pray your blessings upon each one. We also thank you, Father, for... Um, uh, for uh, your provision. Uh, we are so cognizant that the first of the month is always a time when people are aware of the need for provision. And so we ask a very specific prayer that you would, um, that you would continually provide, uh, your, provide our needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And we also pray, Father, for uh, the church. Uh, this church, Hope in the Hills, as well as the global church, uh, the church here in America as well. Um, we desperately need you. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of conflicts. There's wars. There's just all kinds of things happening. And we need truth, Lord. We need the truth. We pray that the truth will set us free. And we ask God um, just that you would be in the middle of all that's happening. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray and thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 We have been in a series on navigation, and we have talked about navigating the lows after the highs. We've talked about navigating transition. We've talked about navigating success. Yes, that is a thing, because once the Lord has blessed us and we have received the answer to our prayers and we have reached our goals, we have to have a plan on how we are going to navigate that. And last week we talked about it's all about the process, and we hope you can go back and pick that one up as well. So today, today, we want to talk about navigating boundaries, navigating boundaries. Now, boundaries is a bit of a buzzword now, and that's all because of uh, the advances that have been made in understanding healthy relationships and understanding that healthy boundaries help us have healthy relationships. But before we jump into the relationship part, which we will talk about today, <laughs> because that's why we're going to talk about boundaries. But before we jump into that, if we were to look up Bible and boundaries, relationships don't come up. Almost always when it comes to boundaries and the Bible, it deals with land and how land is split up and people crossing over those boundaries and the conflict that ensues. But isn't that exactly what's going on now in our world? Fighting, war over land, and how land is being divided up and how people want to divide up the land. Same ancient war in the same ancient areas and spilling over into the rest of the world. And please hear me, we de we're dealing with it on this side too. Even from the inception of our nation, boundaries, land, war, the land is equated with the ability to procure wealth and whoever procures the well supposedly then has the power. All of this conflict, continual conflict over people jockeying for land and setting boundaries and conflict and war. When we first moved to the city, um, to this city, uh, I was going to the city council meetings and I was so frustrated because the city council would spend two hours 
arguing over a foot of land between somebody's property. And I, I, I literally was like, the God in this city is land. And if we really think about it, all over our nation, land is the one thing we don't have more of. So in cities where we are landlocked, the prices of the land has skyrocketed. And not even just trying to own land and buy land, but even renting. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin sent me an article this past week that showed how an algorithm, one of the real estate groups created an algorithm, which then increased the, the rental prices across the nation exponentially. Like people are running away with millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, everybody is trying, trying our best to, to just keep a roof over our heads. Right. Land and boundaries and conflict and war. So if we understand that on a base level, if we understand how conflict is caused when boundaries are drawn on land, and when, when those boundaries are crossed and the wars that happen, we can understand that same concept when it comes to our relationships. Usually in a relationship, you've got two people. And those two people have, have drawn some boundaries. And when those boundaries get crossed over, <laughs> there's conflict, there is war. So while the Bible may not refer to that conflict as crossing boundaries, we can certainly look at the conflict and how the Bible addresses conflict and where that comes from. And that's what we want to do today. Go to the book of James. Go to the book of James. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. I want us to look at this today. It's not a new scripture, but it's one that we need to revisit often, especially now in the political climate in our nation, in the global climate around the world, with all of the conflict that is that is going forward. This is a really good scripture to come back to. It's probably one we need to revisit often. So James chapter 4, James chapter 4, it says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but do not have. So you kill. Mm. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So where's the conflict coming from? Hmm? Where's the conflict coming from, people? Where's the conflict where, what does it say? What does it say? Why are you quarreling and fighting? What is the cause? It says, the cause is your desires that battle within you. Selfish desires. Selfish desires. What makes people step over our boundaries in relationships? What makes people disrespect and dishonor us? What, what is the cause of that? The Bible says it's the war that is waging, <laughs> being waged on the inside of us. And so here it is. We have desires that we're not getting. So then we go out and harm others. When we desire and we don't get, then we're quarreling and fighting. And we're not getting because we're not asking God. But when we do ask God, we don't receive because our motives are wrong. <laughs> so it's back to selfish motives. So here's my thing. Before we get to the point where we are crossing all over somebody else's boundaries, can we just sit for a second and figure out what it is that's going on on the inside of us? If we just took a hot second, just took a minute, just took a minute to figure out what is happening on the inside of me. Before we went out and started blowing up everybody else. <laughs> if we just took a hot, it just took a minute, took a minute, a pause. This is why quiet time with the Lord is so important because when we sit still before the Holy Spirit and we repent and we ask him to show us the areas where we need to repent and show us the areas that, that we need to deal with, we can start dealing with those things on the inside of us before we go out and cross all over everybody else's boundaries. Now, what do I mean by that? 
let, let me give you an example from Tinseltown, <laughs> from, here, from here in Hollywood. Uh, many of you guys might know Cedric the Entertainer. And mind you, this is a public story that he talked about. So I'm only repeating a story that he said, okay? <laughs> now, I don't know Cedric personally. I know people who know, but I don't know him personally. So please, by all means, I'm simply repeating the public story that he told. When he became Cedric the Entertainer and quote unquote made it, family began to express an expectation that even though he's the one that worked and he's the one that made it, that the expectation was somehow that he was supposed to provide all of their needs. Okay. He sets a boundary, meaning, all right, family, family members keep asking for resources. So what I'm going to do is set up a $25,000 family fund a year. And if you need, you need something from the family fund, you know, not like you're going to Vegas or something, but you know, you need to help, help paying for school or you don't need to lose your house, like that kind of stuff. You can go to the, and mind you, he, he, he said his sister ran the fund, <laughs> but you can go, you can apply, you deal with the sister, you can figure that out. Here's the thing. He set the boundary. Do you know that the family <laughs> did not honor the boundary? Said, said that the family wanted more. And uh, there's all kinds of conflict that began to ensue because people wanted more than, than what was there. People wanted, more, you know, wanted their own stash. People want, it just, it was just. So the next boundary he had to set was, all right, well, then we just going to shut this down. I just, you know, like for the life of me. <laughs> what, and so what, is, what does the scripture say? Back to James 4. What, is this, what does it say? Why was there conflict? Why was there conflict? Why was there quarreling? Right? When, when said set up the boundary, why was there conflict? Why was there quarreling? Because of the desires that battle within you. <laughs> Was it because of sin? Because of people's own selfish desires, right? You desire, but, you, and, but do not have. So you kill. You covet, but cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask who? Not as said. You do not have because you do not ask God. How did the family now set set up as their God? And mind you, granted, if you're part of the family, look, I just, I just heard him talk about it. So I don't know him personally. I know some folks who do. I don't know him personally. And I'm, I'm just repeating the story that he told. <laughs> so if you family member, I want to hear from you. Don't, don't be blowing up my number this week. Talk about you don't know us. Why are you talking about it? I'm just saying, I'm just repeating a public story. But why did, why did he become the, the all out provider for the whole family? The scripture says, you do not have because you do not ask God. And when you do ask God, you don't receive because your motives are off. Like you just simply, the scripture says, you just want to spend, spend whatever you get on your own pleasures. The reason why we set healthy boundaries in relationship is in order for each person to feel seen and heard and understood and valued. This is not to say that boundaries are bad. That's not the point of this message. We set boundaries. And then when we set those boundaries, when we set those demarcations, the conflict and the fighting happens when those boundaries are crossed. So for each one of us, when we are looking at our relationships and we began to, to, to begin to try to set healthy boundaries for a healthy relationship, the con please, please know that the conflict, <laughs> the conflict and the war is going to pop off when, when we start stepping all over those boundaries. Just expect it. As a matter of fact, there may be some of us who need to make sure that we are setting boundaries right? There are some of us who you're hearing this and it's causing you anxiety and stress because you know you need to set boundaries and you know boundaries that you have set are being walked all over. However, you don't want the conflict. And so this morning for you, I need to encourage you to just go ahead and expect the conflict, know that it's coming and be okay that conflict is going to come and that you all will have to work it out because on the other side of the conflict is a better relationship. And if you are in relationship with someone who refuses, absolutely refuses to honor the boundaries that you set that make you safe, then 
One, you can try to get counseling together and try to, you know, go with a third party that will help. And if the person still does not want to honor the boundaries, then at that point, it's probably best that you start looking at some other options, right? Uh, I will, you will never hear me tell anybody to stay in relationships that are harmful, that are abusive, where someone like literally, you know, it does not, <laughs> it's all about the selfish motive. You know, they're, they're, they're only looking out for themselves. They're not looking out for you at all like that. That's a recipe for disaster and, and you will not be okay. Right. And so, and so on this morning, what you might need to hear is there is going to be conflict. However, you need to set the boundary anyway, there's going to be conflict when you set the boundary and that boundary is crossed, but you still need to bring it back up anyway. Right. You, you will need to in any of these situations, you need to set the boundaries and enforce the boundaries, right? Um, and be okay that there's going to be conflict. Conflict is not the end of the world. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. We are to expect it. But even in that, even in the expectation, what I want to do is draw us back to this James chapter four and each one of us go, let, I'm responsible for me. So let me check myself before, before I go stepping all over somebody else's boundaries. What are my selfish motivations? What is it that I'm trying to do here? What is it? What is going on? Because if I want what's best for you and you want what's best for me, we're not stepping all over each other's boundaries. We're not trying to control each other and trying to, trying to, you know, make you do this and you can't say that and all like all of that <laughs> all of that yeah that that's when that's when the conflict really starts popping off because you're stepping all over you're stepping all over the boundaries and why because of selfish motive okay let's get out of here what is the lord's solution the solution that God gives is verse seven, submit yourselves then to God, resist the enemy and he will flee from you. Down to verse 10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. The solution is humility. Before we go walking all over one another's boundaries because of our own selfish ambition, let us take a moment, humble ourselves before the Lord Take our, our needs to the Lord. Stop looking at the people and trying to make them provide for us. It says we ask God, but we need to ask him for what we need with the right motives. Can we do that? Lord God, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us to bring our needs to you. Please forgive us, God. Oh, my, my, my. How have we walked all over one another's boundaries and had conflict and we're in the middle of wars, God, forgive us, forgive us. We, as your people, we, we got to do better. We need to do better, Lord. So we ask that we will meditate on your word, that it will become a part of our lives, that we will be able to submit ourselves to you and that you will lift us up. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so this is first Sunday, and mm -hmm. so if you need a second to go ahead and get your elements, your wine, juice, crackers, Kool-Aid, whatever you have. Please don't do Kool-Aid. There's nothing. I mean, you know, people have what they yeah, have, Yeah, right? I know, but... Juice, whatever you have. Kool-Aid is, is a symbol, juice. But... <laughs> it's juice. No. Okay. <laughs> it's something healthier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to have sugar in it. Now. It might not taste good. Okay. You can still have juice. All right. Hopefully you have your elements. Uh, we're going to take communion. Mm. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink.
For whenever you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord God, thank you so much for this time of communion. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your body, your blood for us, that we, um, as we believe in you, can spend eternity with you. Um, thank you. And on today, we, we ask your forgiveness for all of our sin. We accept your forgiveness. We forgive ourselves and we forgive others. And we take this time to uh, recommit ourselves uh, in communion with you and in communion with your family. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So for those who need to know how to support the work of the Hope in the Hills ministry, you can go to hopeinthehills.org or .net slash give, and you will receive all of the options available to you. Or you can just reach out to us by going to the website and give us your feedback. If you're looking for a church home, we're here. Absolutely. Um, so we're looking for you just like you're looking for us. And yeah. we hope that we will find each other so that we can do community together. Mm -hmm. um, so love you guys. Hey. We look forward to the next time. All right now. And until then, have a blessed week. Peace.